Think of all the images we see every day, from images on TV, billboards, social media, the internet, video games, magazines, and websites. Just from the images we see on ads every day, it's average that people are exposed to 4,000 to 10,000 each day. With people being exposed to so many images, how do you make your image stand out from the rest of the pack? That's where emphasis comes into play. If you're looking to create images that stand out from the rest of the crowd in order to get more likes on social media, get more clients, or to build up your photography brand awareness, then it's important to know what emphasis is in your photography and how to add emphasis to your images. Emphasis in photography is a technique photographers use to make their subjects stand out in order to quickly capture and hold the viewer's attention. As we'll touch on later, however, emphasis is not achieved through just one technique, but can be created by using many techniques and tips. Similar to emphasizing a word in a sentence or on a screen, emphasis in photography gives a specific focal point or subject importance. As photographers, we have the power to choose what we want to emphasize to the viewer. This emphasis can greatly influence the story that we want to tell through our image. I did want to note, however, that although we can emphasize a specific person or thing in an image, the viewer may have a different story or emotion that they get from viewing that image. So in other words, as photographers, we can do our best to add emphasis to an image to drive a certain story, but it's still up to the viewer to what emotion or story they take away from the image. For example, in this image I took, I wanted to draw the main emphasis on the area with the yellow sunset using complementary colors and negative space. However, the story or emotions that take away from this image could vary. The story I wanted to convey was one of a peaceful, relaxing beach session watching the sun go down. Other stories viewers could have could relate to the people on the bottom right walking on the beach, and it could have reminded the viewer how they used to do that with their family. The viewer may also notice the airplane streak in the sky and remind them of an air show they went to when they were younger. My point is, the photographer should emphasize only one thing or focal point in an image, but the viewer may draw many stories or emotions from it. In order to show emphasis in your own photography, it will require an understanding of composition, lighting, color, the technical know-how of your camera, such as shooting in manual mode, and how the elements of the exposure triangle all work together to affect exposure. While you may capture emphasis in an image accidentally, knowing how to capture it each time will allow you to take the guesswork out when on a photo shoot. With that being said, let's dive into all the tips you can use to emphasize your subject. I did want to quickly note before diving into the tips that though knowing how to capture emphasis in your photography is important, you don't necessarily need to have emphasis in every single photo that you take. While emphasis can certainly add impact and interest to your image, sometimes a photograph can be effective even if there is no single element that's emphasized. For example, landscape photographs often have a sense of balance and harmony with no single element dominating the composition. In such cases, the beauty and visual interest of the image comes from the overall scene rather than from any particular element. One of the most effective ways to create emphasis in your images is to use a shallow depth of field. This involves you using a wide aperture, which is a smaller f-stop, in order to limit the amount of the scene that is in focus, which can draw your viewer's eyes to a specific person or thing in the image. When using a shallow depth of field, the subject you are emphasizing will be sharp and clear, while the background will be blurred. Oftentimes, this is what creates that dreamy bokeh look. The background blur when using a shallow depth of field will also create a sense of depth and distance which will help the subject or focal point you are trying to emphasize look and feel more isolated and separated from the rest of the elements in the scene. Oftentimes, using this technique is most effective for any mid to close range photography, such as portrait photography, headshot photography, macro photography, etc. To achieve this shallow depth of field look, you first need to ensure you are using a lens that can achieve a wide aperture setting with f-stop numbers ranging from f1.8 or f2.8. Once you set your f-stop to that number, this is where it's also good to know how the other two elements of the exposure triangle, uh, the shutter speed and ISO, interact with the aperture settings to get the perfect balance of exposure in the image and emphasis on the subject. For example, in this image, I used f1.8 on a 50mm lens to capture shallow depth of field to draw focus to the subject's face and eyes. The second way to create emphasis in your image is to simply crop the image. Cropping will remove any parts of the image that you feel are not essential to the subject or story you want to tell, and only highlight the important elements in the photograph. By cropping your image, you can remove any unnecessary elements so you can better draw the viewer's attention directly to the person or thing you're trying to emphasize in the image. Cropping can be particularly effective when photographing a scene that has many elements and potential focal points such as landscape or street photography. When you crop your image, however, make sure you're mindful of the aspect ratio of the photograph. I recommend using the recommended crop aspect ratios when cropping your image in order to ensure you maintain a common aspect ratio. 
If you don't maintain a common aspect ratio such as 4 to 5 or 5 to 7 or even 1 to 1, then when you export your image, you may experience a loss of detail or sharpness in the final photograph. The third tip to create emphasis in your images is to use the rule of thirds composition technique. The rule of thirds is one of many photography composition techniques. I even have a video on 30 of them, so be sure to check that out. But I believe it is one of the first composition techniques every photographer should know and consider using. The rule of thirds involves you dividing your images into thirds, both horizontally and vertically, to create a grid of nine equal sections. From there, you'll want to place your main focal point or subject on one of the intersections of the grid. The subject or focal point that is placed on the intersection will be the point of emphasis in the image. I personally love this technique because it's pretty simple composition technique to pull off and it could create a more dynamic and interesting looking image. It can also be used in pretty much every photography genre from portraits to product photo shoots. The fourth tip to create emphasis in your images is to use the framing composition technique. Framing involves the use of elements within the scene to create a frame around your subject or focal point to draw attention to it. Elements that can be used to create this frame can range from trees, arches, rails, doors, etc. Framing can also be used to create a sense of contrast and juxtaposition, which can create a um, overall more visually interesting composition. Once you get the hang of framing down, you, then you can also try out a frame within a frame composition technique, which involves framing within your current frame. It sounds more complicated than it really is, and most framing compositions are also a frame within a frame photography compositions. I have a whole guide on that in video, uh, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. One other tip when it comes to framing is to try to avoid creating a frame that has too much going on in it, or it could take away from the impact of the subject or focal point within the frame that you're trying to emphasize. The fifth technique you can use to create emphasis in your images is to use leading lines. Leading lines are another powerful composition technique that involves using lines within the scene to lead the viewer's eyes toward a subject or a focal point uh, in the image. The point that the leading lines are being directed to is often the point of emphasis within the image. When using leading lines, you'll want to consider the direction and placement of the lines. There are many things you can use as leading lines, such as railways, railings, roads, streets, pavements, etc. Similar to the framing composition, you'll want to ensure that the objects that the lines are leading to are not too distracting or else it could draw away from the overall composition and emphasis. The sixth technique you can use to create emphasis in photography is to use triangle and diagonal lines. Just as the name sounds, this technique often involves the use of diagonal lines and shapes of the triangles to lead the viewer's eyes to a particular point in the image. Similar to leading lines, the point where the lines meet should be the point of emphasis in the image. For example, in this image, there are triangles that all meet at the point of emphasis. The seventh tip is pattern breaking. Pattern breaking is a powerful technique in photography that involves deliberately breaking patterns. By breaking the patterns, you can create emphasis and visual interest in your images. This technique can be used to create a sense of surprise or tension within the photograph, and can be particularly effective in creating a unique and visually interesting image. The subject or element that breaks the pattern will be the point of emphasis. When using pattern breaking, you can identify established patterns within the scene, such as repetitive shapes, colors, or textures, and deliberately introduce an element that disrupts or breaks this pattern. This can create a more dynamic and visually interesting composition that draws the viewer's attention toward the most important elements of the photograph. Pattern breaking can also be used to create a sense of contrast and juxtaposition within the photograph. By introducing an element that contrasts with the established patterns within the scene, you can create a more visually interesting image that draws the viewer's attention towards the subject. When you're using pattern breaking, it's important to consider the balance and composition of the image. You should try to avoid creating a composition that feels too chaotic or disjointed, as this can detract from the impact of the subject. Instead, focus on creating a balanced and visually appealing composition that draws the viewer's attention toward the subject or focal point. The eighth tip to add emphasis to your image is to use texture. Adding texture to an image is a great way for you to add depth and interest to your image while also creating emphasis on certain elements within the photograph. Texture can be found in many different forms, such as rough surfaces, smooth surfaces, or even in the patterns and lines of an object. Texture can be used to create a sense of depth and dimension within your image, which can create a more three-dimensional and tactile image that invites the viewer in. For example, by using interesting textures on the focal point you want to emphasize within your image, along with a background that has no texture, it can create a contrast that will draw emphasis to that area. In order to capture texture correctly, you'll want to strike a balance between highlighting the unique characteristics of the texture, while also creating a balanced and visually appealing composition that puts emphasis on your main subject or focal point. 
The ninth tip to emphasize your subject in photography is to keep it simple. Having a simple and uncluttered background and scene will allow the viewer to easily be drawn to the main subject in the image. In order to keep the scene simple, you'll want to first consider the overall composition of the shot. Make sure that there are no unnecessary elements of the frame that could distract from the subject or focal point you are trying to draw emphasis on. For example, if your main emphasis is on a person, then try to remove any objects or other people that may detract from him or her. Another way to keep the scene simple is to use a shallow depth of field as mentioned earlier in order to separate your subject from the background to make the subject and point of emphasis more prominent in your photo. The 10th tip to emphasize your subject is to fill the frame, which is another effective compositional technique. In order to fill the frame, just as the name sounds, you simply eliminate any extraneous details or distractions, leaving only the subject for the viewer to focus on. To go about filling the frame, you can either physically move closer to your subject or use a longer lens and then zoom in. This technique is also especially effective when you're photographing smaller subjects or details such as with macro photography. Since the subject or point of emphasis will be the only thing in the frame, then it's an easy way and technique to use to incorporate emphasis into your photograph. The next tip is to use negative space. Negative space is another great technique to add emphasis to your subject in photography. Negative space refers to the area around your subject that is intentionally left empty. By leaving the space, there is a sense of isolation and minimalism that is added to the image that will draw the viewer's attention to the subject and point of emphasis. In order to use negative space, you must leave a significant portion of the frame empty in order to create a sense of balance and allow the viewer's eyes to rest on the subject. Using negative space in your images is especially effective when photographing simple, minimalist subjects such as lone trees, one to two people, or a single flower. By leaving a large area of negative space, you can create a sense of solitude and contemplation that will not only add emphasis, but will enhance the impact of your subject. The twelfth tip to add emphasis to your subjects is to use analogous colors. Analogous colors are colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel, such as blue and green, or red and orange. Analogous colors create a sense of harmony and balance that can enhance the impact and add emphasis to your subject. When using analogous colors, it's important to consider the color of your subject and choose a background or environment that complements it. For example, if your subject is a blue flower, you could choose a green background to create a sense of unity and balance. Using analogous colors is especially effective when photographing nature scenes such as landscapes or flowers. By choosing colors that are found in nature and that complement each other, you can create a visually pleasing image that captures the beauty of the subject. It's important to note that using analogous colors does not mean that your photograph should only contain two colors. You can use a range of colors within the analogous color scheme to create depth and interest in your image. When using a color harmony such as analogous or complementary colors, the color that you want to emphasize should make up around 10 to 25% of the photo. For example, in this image, the emphasis is on the orange, which we can see is around 25% of the photo, while the green in the image makes up the other 75%. On the other side of analogous colors, we have complementary colors. Using complementary colors is another effective technique to emphasize your subject. Complementary colors are colors that are opposite to each other on the color wheel, such as blue and orange, or red and green. By using complementary colors in your photograph, you can create a sense of contrast and tension that draws the viewer's attention to the subject. Similar to using analogous colors, when you use complementary colors, you'll also want to pay attention to the color of your subject, you know, their outfits, makeup, hair color, skin tone, etc., and the background or environment they contrast with. For example, if your subject is a red apple, you could choose a green background to create a sense of contrast and vibrancy. Using complementary colors is especially effective when photographing still life or product shots. By choosing colors that are opposite each other, you can create a visually striking image that captures the viewer's attention and draws emphasis. The 14th tip is to use contrast. Using contrast is a fundamental technique in photography that can be used to emphasize your subject. Contrast refers to the difference between the light and dark areas of an image. By using contrast in your photograph, you can create a sense of drama and emphasis that draws the viewer's attention to the subject. There are two types of contrast that can be used in photography, tonal contrast and color contrast. Tonal contrast refers to the difference between the light and dark areas of an image, while color contrast refers to the difference between the colors in the image. We covered color contrast in the previous section regarding complementary colors. To use tonal contrast effectively, you can use lighting techniques such as side lighting or backlighting to create deep shadows and bright highlights. This creates a sense of depth and dimensionality that emphasizes the subject. To use color contrast effectively, you can use complementary colors as mentioned earlier, or use colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. 
For example, a blue subject can be emphasized by placing it against an orange or yellow background. Using contrast is especially effective when photographing subjects with strong lines or shapes, such as architecture or landscapes. By emphasizing the contrast between the light and dark areas, you can create a visually striking image that captures the viewer's attention. The final tip to add emphasis in your photography is to use curved lines. Curved lines can add a sense of flow and movement to an image, which can draw the viewer's attention to your main focal point. To use curved lines effectively, you can position your subject in a way that emphasizes the curve of the lines. This can be achieved by using composition techniques such as framing the subject within the curves in the background. It's important to note that when using curved lines, it's important to ensure that the subject stands out against the background. This can be achieved by using lighting or depth of field to separate the subject from the background. In conclusion, I hope you enjoyed this guide on emphasis in photography and took away something valuable from the tips. Emphasis is a great way to add that extra bit of aesthetic interest to your images and turn a bland photo into a great one. Emphasis should always be considered, but as mentioned earlier, it's not always needed in a photograph, but it's a good tool to have in your photography tool belt. With that being said, if you guys liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to identify your number one photography progress killer, be sure to check out the quiz I have on my website, which you can find in the description box down below. Thanks for watching.